In this clip, I explore the different forms of Christianity using the Octicon graphic to help map them out and inspired by the book Uncommon Prayer by Kenneth Swanson. Why are there so many Christian denominations each thinking it has the truth? Is it because the way we interpret the truth depends on which faculties we prefer to use and the type of personality we have? Here's how I think the denominations relate to the four main faculties of the Octicon. The early church, like Christ, would have had a balanced personality. It is, and was described in the Nicene Creed as the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, and so is located in the middle. Catholic is with a small c, meaning universal. But it gradually evolved into two main strands, the Eastern Orthodox, plus Oriental churches, and the Western Catholic Church, different in cultural form and temperament, which eventually split, mainly because of issues of authority and theological understanding of the Trinity. I think they correspond with the observing and acting faculties as shown. When the Western Roman Catholic Church needed reforming, many Protestant churches split away, disagreeing on issues of biblical doctrine. In other words, they focused on the interpretive faculty. The split from Catholic to Anglican was mainly political, and is now considered as Protestant or Low Church, through to Anglo-Catholic or High Church. The expressive Pentecostal churches came into being relatively recently through the spirit-led revival of some Protestant churches. The charismatic movement is similarly spirit-led, but is found across many other denominations. I have therefore mapped these more emotional forms of Christianity onto the expressive faculty. There is also a mystical and meditative movement. Is it inevitable that we will always have all these forms of Christianity? What could bring us all together respecting our differences? And what sort of Christianity with regard to beliefs, styles of worship and practice would this be like? Here's what I think it should be like, based on the thoughts and ideas of many people, and I have called it complete Christianity. In this view, the Christian Church, in its fullest form, can be thought of as having various branches, all equally important in connecting us with the Trinitarian view of God whether as individuals, body and soul, as different groups, or as humanity in general. These branches can all lead us to the divine centre of our faith, so here they are mapped onto the respective octicon faculties. The contemplative branch will be about connecting by watching, focusing on meditation and contemplation. Practices will include retreats and the monastic and ascetic ways of life. Balancing this will be the active branch, connecting by doing, focusing on rituals, sacraments and the priesthood. Practices will include practical help, support and care to the needy and missionary work. Then there is a cognitive branch, connecting through thinking, focusing on the development of theology, defining doctrines and disciplines. An important practice will be the study of scriptures. And balancing this will be expressive branch, connecting by showing focusing on prayer, praise and evangelization. Practices will include liturgical development, charismatic expression and the so-called happy clappy approaches to worship. The other outer linking faculties can help us to embrace spiritual forms of discernment, laws and commandments, direction and freedom to be creative in worship. Unfortunately, the divisions within the church have led to an imbalance and conflict as some branches have been either rejected, ignored misunderstood or given too much emphasis. Part of the problem seems to lie with the Western viewpoint that has largely determined how Christianity has developed. There has been a tendency to reject what Eastern religions and cultures have to offer instead of accepting what is true and beneficial. For the church to grow as a tree of life, it is important to cultivate all branches so that they can develop and bear fruit. At the same time, we need to prune them when they get out of balance and unfruitful. In what ways do our communities support the ecumenical movement and help to bring churches together? <laughs>